Hello everyone and welcome on the Papier de Rêve channel. I'm Ursula and today I will be painting with you a landscape. You will see that it's a bit of a weird landscape uh, and I guess that you won't expect that uh, subject from me uh, but I really like uh, this picture I've taken a year ago and I wanted to paint uh, very badly uh, and I just didn't dare to paint it because um, I felt that it was very difficult to paint but uh, today I changed that and I'm painting this uh, landscape. So my subject is a view of uh, an harbor in Barcelona. Uh, it's viewed from uh, an hill uh, that is uh, above the city, which is Montjuic. Uh, and I really like this view because it's uh, quite a harsh uh, contrast between the nature uh, on top of the hill and uh, the city and the commercial and industrial activity uh, in, the, in the harbor. If you want to have a peek at uh, this reference uh, picture, it will be up on my blog. Uh, the link is in the description box just below the video uh, and you will be able to see uh, what I'm going to paint uh, today. As I'm not very familiar with uh, painting this sort of uh, landscape, I much prefer painting landscape with just nature on, on it. Uh, I choose to work in a smaller uh, format uh, just because that way I don't have to make uh, much details. Uh, I have to simplify the shape quite a lot because the, the size of my sheet of paper is quite uh, small. And in this idea to simplify shape, I'm using quite a big brush for this small paper. Uh, and it's uh, really just to uh, make some more abstract shape with it. Once I'm totally happy with my first layer, uh, with no detail at all, as you can see, I will let it dry and then I'm adding some, some details into it. So as I said at the beginning, uh, I really like the contrast uh, between the nature and the city below. Uh, so I'm adding quite a lot of details in the nature part of this, uh, this painting. And it's quite interesting to paint this nature because there is a lot of Mediterranean plants uh, in, in this area. Uh, here I'm painting an agave. Uh, there is a lot of cactuses around. Uh, so it's quite fun and it's uh, a little bit uh, uh, changing from just a traditional flower. Even though I'm, I'm working on quite a small part of this painting, I, I'm trying to uh, still paint with a big brush uh, because I do not want to go too much in details and painting with a, bridge, a big brush will uh, allow me to, uh, to do that. Uh, I cannot focus on details because the brush is too big. And for today's painting, uh, you can see that I'm not using uh, my regular palette and colors uh, that I'm used to uh, use uh, these past few months. Um, I just uh, wanted to try uh, this new uh, color that I have uh, get uh, from Christmas. Uh, it's a, a core palette uh, with golden paints in it and uh, I really love them. And I wanted to try them for quite a long time because they have uh, a really interesting particularity to it. Watercolor paintings are made from pigments and a binder and in traditional uh, watercolor uh, paint the binder is uh, gum arabic but here in this set of, uh, of colors the binder is something more technical uh, that is made by, by the brand core. Uh, it's uh, named Aquazol and it allows the pigments to travel a little bit more and a little bit differently on the paper. When you infuse some color in a wet area uh, with this binder, it will uh, whoosh uh, into the wet area and disperse itself quite a lot. And you can see that uh, just above the agave, uh, you can see that the pigment is making some uh, sort of filament into the wet area. 
And I have to say that it's uh, really interesting to work uh, with this, uh, this sort of effect. Uh, it's really pleasing to see the colors uh, just taking place on the wet paper. And uh, as the, these colors are really, really highly pigmented, uh, you have quite a big impact of colors with uh, quite a small amount of paint. And this set is made from just uh, earthy uh, tones of colors. There is just one blue, uh, one green and one yellow, and the rest is uh, reds and uh, brown. Uh, and I really like this set for painting landscape because the colors are just uh, really on point with landscape painting. Uh, there is a warm color and uh, quite some cool color with the indigo. Uh, so you can do really all the color in nature with this set. And I have used this uh, warm tone and cool tone in my painting. All the warmer and reddish tone are on the background. Uh, they are representing uh, the harbor and all the industries that are in it. And the cooler tone and more fresh greens and blues uh, are used in the foreground uh, where there is uh, all the nature uh, surrounding uh, this uh, harbor. And before finishing this second layer, uh, I'm working a little bit more on the harbor uh, area of this painting. I'm adding some details and for that I'm, I've changed my brush for a really smaller one because uh, it's just uh, too difficult with a big brush at this point. Uh, the picture is really, really small, so I have to adapt my, my brush. And I'm using this brush in particular because the point is really, really sharp on it and I can make really fine lines with it. But as it's a natural hair, I have quite a lot of uh, water in it. So uh, it's really handy uh, it, and I don't have to take back colors again and again. I will let this uh, layer dry and talk you through my supplies. For the brushes, I'm using a Princeton Neptune number no. 8, a Rosemary & Co R9 and an Escoda Ultimo 1 inch. For the colors, I'm using Venetian Red, Transparent Bone Oxide, Naples Yellow, Sap Green, and Indigo. And today my paper is from Archies in a rough for the third and last layer, I want to build up some contrast into my painting so that uh, you can feel a little bit more the depth into it and uh, it's a little bit more detailed and interesting. Uh, so I will work in, into the agave and adding a lot more contrast into it and a lot more definition also into the leaves. And I'm also adding some details as you can see on the harbor part of the painting. Uh, just some tiny darker area here and there uh, in order to make, uh, make it a little bit more um, understandable. And for the darker color in the arbor, I'm mixing uh, transparent brown oxide with indigo in order to get a really, really uh, dark color. I can have a really dark gray that way and it's just perfect uh, in this painting. And for the ship uh, in the really far background of the painting, I'm just using indigo uh, so that it will blend a little bit more with uh, the water. The indigo color from this brand is a little bit different from the one uh, I use uh, regularly uh, from Isaro. Uh, this uh, core one has uh, a lot more vibrancy into it and it's a little bit more blue. Uh, in some way uh, and I think that I prefer the Isaro one uh, just because of the separation of the pigment into it and uh, also the tone is a little bit more dark and more uh, muted uh, and I think that I prefer that in, in this kind of color. But even though the tone is not my preferred one, I have to say that this indigo is really packed with pigment. It has a lot of payoff and it stays really dark uh, quite easily and uh, I, I do like that a lot. 
I was very stressed before painting this uh, this painting just because uh, it's a subject that is quite difficult for me. I'm not used to paint a landscape with a lot of uh, industry and city into it. Uh, so that part is quite uh, hard for me. But in order to make it easy for myself, I've also painted a little study before this one uh, in a smaller uh, format uh, so that I can try and uh, see what I can do with it. And I think it's quite a, um, an interesting way to work uh, because uh, I can just uh, make my work a little bit better by trying and experimenting before. And uh, after this video, I've uh, made another painting with the same subject, uh, but uh, I've tried to abstract it a lot. And I think it turned out really, really great. Uh, I did not film it, but you will be able to see it on my uh, blog. And this video is now ending. Thanks for watching and I hope you like it. Please check the blog post for more information about it and tell me what you think in the comments. See you soon.